Sharks, stingrays, crocodiles. If you encounter any of these whilst in the water, you know what to do. Get away quick. But let's look at some visually less intimidating underwater creatures that you should do the exact same thing upon seeing, as they can be just as dangerous in their own unique ways. Let's start with the pufferfish. Why is this bizarre looking fish that's usually no more than three feet in size something you should avoid? Well, let's first address the strange appearance of the fish. For those of you who've never seen it, which is unlikely given its prominence in numerous film and television shows, you'll be aware that they have the unique ability to inflate themselves like a balloon. Researchers believe they developed this feature as a defense mechanism, given that their slow and clumsy swimming style makes them vulnerable to predators. So, instead of trying to escape by outswimming their chaser, the pufferfish can inhale large amounts of water or even air and expand up to three times their original size. They're able to do this because their stomachs are highly elastic, and by the time they're finished inflating, they look like a football. Well, a football with spikes, that is. These spikes are known as spines. Even though the fish can inflate to a large size, this still won't be enough to put off all its potential predators. So, these spines' purpose is to make the pufferfish even more inedible. Now, common sense would suggest that you should have no interest in jumping into the water and trying to eat a pufferfish for lunch. So, why does being difficult to eat make them something you should avoid if you come across them in the ocean? Oh, did I not yet mention that pufferfishes are extremely toxic? Let's break it down. In the event a predator fancies proving themselves as fearless and unbothered by catching themselves a pufferfish as a snack, they won't enjoy it for long. Almost all pufferfish contain tetrodotoxin, a poisonous substance, on top of making a pufferfish a very unsatisfying meal from a taste standpoint. This substance is also lethal to fish. And not just fish, but humans too. The substance is almost 1,200 times more poisonous than the well-known poison cyanide. There's enough poison in one pufferfish to endanger nearly 30 humans. Oh, and in the event you come into contact with this substance, there's no known antidote. So yeah, maybe it's best to stay away from them altogether. Might not be the easiest thing to do, by the way, if you spend a lot of time in the ocean, as there are more than 120 species of pufferfish found worldwide most of which are in plentiful supply. They range in size from the one inch long dwarf or pygmy puffer to the giant freshwater puffer, which can grow to more than two feet in length. They all have four teeth that merge together into a beak-like form. Not to worry though. Thankfully, pufferfish don't have any real interest in humans. They're carnivorous, but their diet mostly consists of invertebrates and algae. Bigger pufferfish will even crack open and eat clams mussels, and shellfish with their hard beaks. The pufferfish are believed to synthesize their poison from the bacteria in the animals they munch on. Who would have thought that those fish that look like the similarly named puffer ball could be so dangerous? So what's the next underwater creature that you should express caution around? Perhaps even more conspicuous with its deadliness is the Congus geographus, more commonly referred to as the geography cone which is the most dangerous out of the 500 species of cone snails. Yep, you heard that word right, snail. Not that different from the snails you used to pick up in your garden as a kid. This little guy, who typically measures between four and six inches, is better off to be avoided. However, you might be tempted to try and examine one, given their beautifully patterned brown and white shells, which are highly prized by shell collectors. So why are they dangerous? Well. Just like the pufferfish, they're also poisonous. Their venom is a complex concoction of hundreds of different toxins. It's delivered via a harpoon-like tooth propelled from an extendable proboscis, which is the long nose of any mammal. What is it with these creatures' lack of concern for human safety? Just like the pufferfish, there's no known antidote for the geography cone's venom. Treatment is limited to keeping any of their victims alive and well. Are there any side effects of their venom? Well, more bad news, yes, there is, and it's instant paralysis. It has to be, or the snail's prey would simply swim away to die, and the creature would be left with nothing for its efforts. 
You have to remember that speed isn't the strong suit of most species of snails. Most gastropods, another name for both snails and slugs, move at a maximum of three inches per minute. This means if a snail didn't stop to rest for an hour, it could still only travel a distance of 16 feet. Not exactly an underwater cheetah, this type of speed doesn't make them terrifying as far as predators go. But what is terrifying is how something so slow can still be so dangerous, and several humans have had unfortunate encounters with the creature. Luckily though, like the pufferfish, the geography cone doesn't have regular contact with humans, and accidents usually only occur due to divers startling or stepping on the creature, or picking up a shell, not knowing the creature's inside. The creature has more of an interest in seeking out fish, marine worms, or other snails as prey. The geography cone also provides evidence that Mother Nature might have a great sense of humor. Research has found that among the compounds found in cone snail venom are proteins that, when isolated, have massive potential as a pain-killing medicine. These proteins target specific human pain receptors and can be up to 10,000 times more potent than other pain-killing medicine without any of the potentially unhealthy added properties and side effects. So, pufferfish and underwater snails. Not exactly something as humans that we're going to think about when we have a gaping hole in our stomachs caused by hunger. Unlike crab meat, a total of 11 million tons of crab, lobster, and prawns are caught or cultured annually. Be careful about which type of crab you eat, though. Not all of them make an enjoyable meal. This is especially true of the Xanthidae family, which is a diverse family of crab species found in Australia. They're easily identifiable from their black-tipped claws. We should be grateful for this unique identifying feature, too. And not just because it could help bring attention to and prevent a potentially nasty pinch from the crab. No, what you really need to worry about with some members of the Xanthidae crab family is the toxins that they possess. Although they don't produce the poison themselves, the mussels and egg masses of some of the species have been found to accumulate two of the most dangerous natural substances known to man, saxitoxin and tetrodotoxin. The second one is the same poison found in the pufferfish. As little as half a milligram of either of these substances can cause serious damage to a human. The good news is that if you do encounter one of these poisonous xanthidae crabs, they don't have any ability to deliver the poison themselves, such as by a bite or jab. The only way to come into contact with their poison is by consuming them. And if you ever consider cooking that crab meat, Note the toxins they possess are heat-stable. This means that the toxins within the crab will persist in the tissue even if you boil them. If you really only have a xanthidae crab to eat, which, as we've established, you can't, there's a Japanese species of pufferfish that may be a viable alternative. It won't be easy, though. Only the most skilled chefs in Japan have licenses to use the creature as an ingredient to make a local delicacy known as fugu. How about you just run to the store and pick up some salmon? Then again, maybe it's best to just do as originally discussed and avoid pufferfish, poisonous snails, and toxic crabs at all costs.